is an extremely powerful thing, especially when we're considering the unknown. What we're considering here is the legalization of cannabis, right? We're considering a commercial market around a substance that in many countries is something entirely prohibited. I don't think fear should guide public policy making, however, particularly when we have very clear examples of what this type of market would look like. I'm going to tell you three things today. First, I'm going to tell you that we have this experience and we can use it in an effective way to guide public policy, that we shouldn't be afraid. Second, I'm going to tell you that markets inherently will solve the majority of problems that occur. And thirdly, I'm going to talk about how we can reduce a lot of the problems that people have with the consumption of marijuana or even other drugs with a market-regulated type of scheme. Before I get into that, though, I briefly want to discuss what we're talking about, right? We're likely talking about a circumstance in a Western liberal democracy. I think, obviously, any sort of legalization is context-specific. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the most likely candidate for legalization, which is in a Western liberal democracy. We're probably also talking about circumstances where we're letting a private market really take control of this type of, uh, really take control of, of the product being sold. And we're not talking about like state subsidized or state grown farms where all this marijuana is going to be cultivated. So with that in mind, I'm going to first talk about how we have experience and we can use that experience and how we really shouldn't be afraid. So when I say experience, I mean we have experience in a variety of areas. We firstly have experience in setting up a regulatory environment. Within the United States, as an example, we have the Food and Drug Administration, an institution set up entirely to look at the types of risks that come with any sort of product that individuals might ingest. In particular with cannabis, we could look at additives, and the types of additives that we may want to prohibit, and the type of additives we may want to allow. The same way that we do this now for tobacco products, the same way that countries across the world use these guidelines and use guidelines that they themselves have developed to look at these types of drugs. Secondly, though, we're also talking about things like labeling and advertising. We understand that consumption is always going to be an issue, right? We don't want minors consuming this. We don't want people to be put at a disposition or preyed upon by advertising to tell them that they might need cannabis. Well, we already use strategies to minimize these risks, right? We ban alcohol advertising to minors in many countries. We ban uh, tobacco advertising. In fact, in Australia, for example, they ban the entirety of any sort of branding on cigarette packs packages because they want to demonstrate that that type of policy is, or that type of risk is something they do not want. That's the same type of policy that can be implanted here. We think restrictions on like age and whatnot have already been implemented for things like alcohol, and these aren't big issues. We have shown success, marg I mean, relatively high levels of success at regulating the amount of alcohol consumed by minors, and at least on the margin, there may be small or isolated incidents where it's not that big of a deal. We may have circumstances where you know people do consume alcohol underage, but the majority of those circumstances can be solved with a harm reduction approach. I would also tell you that we have a multifaceted way to approach legalization and commercialization, right? We can employ systems like nudge-related policy. And what do I mean by this? Like, okay, let me give you an example, right? In Nevada, in the, in the state of Nevada in the United States, we have a situation where a lot of people are prone to be gamblers. So what do you do if you want to restrict the number of individuals who potentially could gamble away their life savings? You allow them to self-enroll on gambling blacklists so they don't over-engage in these types of uh, activities which may harm them or their future. The same thing could be done for alcohol as it has been done in many places and the same thing could be done for cannabis. We think cannabis is a particular target for this because so many individuals believe that it has this idea that they might become addicted or that it might cause long-term harm. Reduction of the amount that you consume by self-imposed policy is a great way, a great example of a sort of libertarian paternalism or a libertarian paternalistic mindset that we could use to legalize these types of products and commercialize these pro products. We think also like we can use policy that's been developed in the Netherlands where they recommend to individuals purchasing cannabis or have individuals make actual recommendations. Those who sell that cannabis make recommendations about how important or how, what certain policies they might want to uh, follow, what types of paraphernalia they might want to use. That is a good thing. Secondly then, let's talk about how markets are going to solve these problems. I think we heard a lot of discussion. All day I've been hearing about black markets, and so far no one's really talked about how black markets are going to go away. I think black markets are going to disappear, not entirely, but they're going to disappear in the majority of circumstances. Why? Schumpeterian creative destruction, ladies and gentlemen. What we're talking about here is the ability for you to get your marijuana delivered to you, rather than having to go outside in the cold in the middle of winter to go get your marijuana from a drug dealer. 
I think that that presents a far more intriguing option for individuals who want to get high than individuals who are, like, rather than going outside, right? This Jupiterian creative destruction is going to make it more likely that you're going to see the uh, removal of black markets. And if anything, right, even a marginal success, even if none of what I'm saying comes true and none of what I'm telling you is actually real, even if there's a little bit of marginal success principally, I think that that is a good thing because you have to remember the harms that come with black markets that will be minimized with even a little bit of marginal success. Secondly then, why is this a really good idea? Because of taxation, obviously, right? When you commercialize something, you can tax it. And when you have tax revenue that you previously didn't have because you weren't capturing a large portion of this market you didn't seem to recognize existed or have been treating in a very bad way, more on drugs, you get to use that money for something like, I don't know, harm reduction programs. These types of programs can be directly funded with the revenue from these types of taxes. And we think ultimately that's a very good thing because you don't only impact cannabis and the commercialization of that, but you also impact other drugs as well. Finally then, how do you reduce the safety concerns, right? The principled idea is that these individuals who consume cannabis are all going to go out and consume harder drugs have been refuted numerous times. But if you don't believe me or the evidence, there's lots of examples to show that in many cases when you cut off exposure to a market, when you cut off the exposure to a person selling you hundreds of different types of drugs, probably only really like five, but like still, when you cut off the exposure to multiple types of drugs, these cannabis shops, these cannabis delivery services, they only deliver one product. And ultimately, that means that they're only going to be delivering the product which is regulated, which is safe, and which is not in the purview of some illicit market dealer who has no interest in safety, who has no interest in the customer, and who has no interest in the societal welfare of individuals taking the drug. So ultimately, what have I told you? One, that we have experience in regulating these types of markets, and that we can use multifaceted approaches to ensure that regulation is something that is done efficiently, effectively, without reducing people's access to the product. Second, I told you that markets are actually going to solve the majority of consumption issues that we see in the status quo with black markets and all the illicit problems that occur with that, like crime, violence, these types of issues will slowly start to go away. At least in any case, that marginal betterment is a good idea. And finally, I told you that we can reduce the safety concerns that a lot of people have, right? We can eliminate the idea of engaging with a illegal black market. We think ultimately that is a fantastic, fantastic thing. Thank you.